One, vertical force. According to Dr. Peter Weyen and colleagues, faster speeds are achieved by higher vertical forces. For example, in this lab study, World Champion Hurdler, David Oliver is applying around eight to 900 pounds of force with each foot strike. One way to improve vertical force is by getting stronger vertically. This can be accomplished through squats, but if we want to get even more specific to sprinting, we can do quarter squats or half squats. According to Brett and colleagues 2002, concentric half squats was the best indicator in the 100 meter out of several movements that they tested. This is an exercise that elite sprinters like Marcel Jacobs, Christian Coleman, and Asafa Powell all use. Ideally, this is an area we can focus on early so that as an athlete gets closer to competing, lifting becomes lighter and faster. Two, slicing the ground. According to Dr. Peter Weyen and Ken Clark, one of the biggest differences between top sprinters and other athletes is how fast they apply vertical forces into the ground. Therefore, it appears that running fast is not just about applying more vertical forces, but also about spiking these forces into the first half of ground contact. Peter Weyen and Ken Clark report that one possible method for spiking forces is by improving the speed at which the foot travels back into the ground. Inside sprint cheat codes, I refer to this as slicing the ground and talk about this first. Further. Considering that there are multiple variables that we need to influence, it is not an easy task to slice the ground and spike ground forces. For example, this excellent graphic by Speedworks shows us that foot speed, pretension, and stiffness are some of the things that happen before ground reaction forces are spiked. In a minute, I'm gonna show you one drill that can help with slicing and spiking ground forces. Three, reactivity. One definition of reactivity is an athlete's ability to change quickly from an eccentric to a concentric contraction and their ability to develop maximal forces in minimal time. This occurs through the stretch and shortening cycle, also known as SSC, which is the mechanism through which a muscle lengthens and then shortens. Based on science, training your SSC can improve your reactivity. We have to consider the ground contact time of each movement. The shorter the ground contact time, the more it will transfer over to sprinting, specifically during the top speed phase. In this useful graphic by the Science of Sport, there's a comparison of a few common exercises and their ground contact times according to different studies. Sprinting is shown to have the shortest ground contact times with depth jumps from 20 centimeters having the most similar ground contact times out of all the movements represented. Four, stiffness. Leg stiffness has been defined as the resistance to deformation due to force. Additionally, Brandt and colleagues 2002 found that athletes with greater vertical stiffness obtain higher acceleration between the first zero to 30 meters and the second 30, 60 meters intervals during a 100 meter sprint concluding that leg stiffness plays a major role in the second phase of a 100 meter sprint. We can easily see if an athlete lacks stiffness when their hips and knees collapse significantly during upright sprinting. One tool for improving this are straight leg bounds, which are nearly identical to sprinting with stiff legs, except it conserves energy by removing the recovery phase. This can also help with slicing the ground and spiking ground reaction forces. That's two minutes, hope that helps. If you want to learn more about improving your top speed, you can watch this video, which goes deeper on how elite sprinters apply vertical forces into the ground.